Hey folks, for a long time I've been supporting the storage project. The premise is simple, you rent out your unused hard disk space and get paid in the storage token. The reasons to join a project like this one are many. Some are in it just for the money, and if you are, you won't like it. Some started to learn more about servers, and some are just here to help provide a viable alternative to the big tech companies. Personally, I'm here for all three reasons. If you've watched my other videos, you will without a doubt have seen my primary SAN unit. It holds 8 20 terabyte hard disks, and most of it is dedicated to storage. I've run out of hard disks to put data on, but luck would have it, I still have two completely unused disk shelves that I can take into production. That raises the all important question, where to source disks on the cheap? Like so many other self-proclaimed tech enthusiasts, I have a slight hoarder tendency, which is why I too have a stack of old disks laying around. And here it is. You might recognize it as a canister of 50 caliber, but since I'm from a country where liberty through lead is highly restricted, I wouldn't know that. I'm sure this box helped bring death and destruction to the world once upon a time in its lifespan, but here in its old days it just serves as a sturdy, albeit ugly, storage container. The next clip is of me opening the case. Skip ahead if you're impatient. The case is there. Let's open up a beer. Perfect for doing this kind of stuff. And before we forget it, let's turn on the real microphone. There's a mark now, it should be recording. That way you get some nice sound. All right. Anyways, let's see what we got going here. I don't exactly remember what's in this case, but uh, should be able to figure it out. All right, so it is filled with discs. Don't actually know if you can see this, but the handy, <laughs> the handy flashlight will serve as well. So it's loaded to the brim with discs. I don't remember what's in here. Let's put this over there. That way you can still like see it. Very cool looking. And let's fish some discs out. So, this one says dead, and it's a 500 gigabyte drive. Okay, get this out. Okay, let's try this. This one says a thousand gigabyte, but no dead label. Here we have, don't actually know. It says ST1000, this has to be another one terabyte drive. Fishing out another drive here. This is from March 2008. Another one terabyte drive, very nice. What do we have here? This is another one terabyte drive. And 250, that might be a bit too small to work with. Let's put it over there. Though. And here, another one terabyte drive, okay, nice. This one, one and a half. This one says dead, uh, but it's on terabyte as well. Two terabytes, very nice. Let's put this over here. Another two terabyte drive, very nice. <laughs> this one very clearly says dead, but it's also one terabyte. A lot of one terabyte drives. Three terabytes, very nice indeed. This one's also three terabytes. And then there are a bunch of smaller little drives in here. Let's just put them here to begin with and we can sort them. This one's now empty, so... Yes, I'm away with you. All right, so there's an SSD here. It's 120, I thought so. This one says clearly dead, but it's 500. This one... Uh, also 500, I think. Yeah. It says HDD Z5K500-500. It's probably 500. We'll put it over there. And this one, 750. Don't know where to put that. I guess it'll go up there. Yeah, we'll do that. We've got another SSD here, 240 gigabyte, nice. Probably useless by today's standards. Another 500. 
but this one says dead as well. And that's it, all of the discs. Mm. Okay, let's get these discs upstairs and we'll see how they work. In this clip, I'm trying to get my RX 1217 expansion unit out of the rack. It seems stuck. I don't really know what I was thinking. It does not make sense to move the entire thing out of the rack. Let's see if I figure it out. Here you're seeing me put the individual drives into the caddies themselves so they can be put into the expansion bay. And will you look at that, I found the speed up clip button. I'm one montage away from being a real content creator man now. I walk the discs up the stairs, through concrete corridors to make new raid pairs, to the storage array the final disc frontier. A red recorder blinks and darkness is near. You see I'm running out of daylight. The sun is setting and soon it will be night. Shuffled into the abyss of the expansion bay. Spinning rust will always obey. And even though not all of the drives will survive, the ones that do will be put to work and thrive. Nestled in their new homes, clicking happily, storage customers must get their data snappily. And as new projects are onboarded and others will simply join, these drives should earn back their worth in the storage coin. Use only what you have, there is no need for greed. This ain't cheer after all, predictability is what we need. It would seem as if all the 1TB drives are dead, so I'll be swapping them out and using the others instead. A single one of the drives shows up as being only 4 GB and at negative 1 degree Celsius the drive is obviously ill. Let's turn on the nasty red locator LED and remove it from the box. We'll have to accept that we are only going to be using 11 discs for the experiment. I can live with that. Here I'm opening up the scary terminal. I'm typing ls to see what files there are and then I'll run my storage bulk identity creator script that will be creating our identities for us. It will take a few hours, so instead of spending the time looking at the terminal, why don't we switch to a clip where we're going to be building the initial storage pools for the four new disk arrays that we're going to build. I'm going to be using RAID 0 on the two 3TB drives. The RAID setup process in Synology is simple and very straightforward. For the most time, you just have to next 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 your way through everything. Okay. Yeah, that's surprising to me too. I'm going to go with RAID 0 with the two 2 terabyte drives. RAID 0 is inherently scary, but these disks are much younger compared to the 500GB and 1TB counterparts, and I trust them to protect the data long enough until I can get them swapped for different and much, much younger models. I don't plan on keeping these drives in production for a long time at all. I'll figure they provide the primary time with assistance until new drives can be acquired. The 500GB drives are being put into a RAID 5 setup, Primarily because they both have five in the main, and I think that's funny. They're also older, and a lot of them had quite some damaged sectors on them, so the added protection is nice. If money is such a big problem, you might ask, why don't you just not expand right now? Good question. I do it because I think this is fun, and having fun without spending additional money is a great way to spend time, in my opinion. And lastly, there is the 750 and 250 gigabyte drive. The 250 gigabyte drive, believe it or not, is one of the newer disks as well. I'll be using the JBot rate level here. I'm not quite sure how the data is stored in this setup, but I'm fairly certain that one disk will be written to at a time, and once that is full, it'll continue on to the next one. This gives no advantages other than a single large volume. As soon as all the storage pools are built, volumes can be built on top of them. 
Volumes are where the files are actually being stored. I won't show you the entire process. We've spent enough time on this segment already. If you're still confused, we'll go ahead and look at the hardware once again. So if you're more of a visual learner, the two 3TB drives are in RAID 0. The two 2TB drives are also in RAID 0. The three 500GB drives are in RAID 5. And the two 50 and 750GB drives are in JBOT. The two SSDs are not used at the moment, but they will be used for caching in the future. Oh, and will you look at that! The storage identity creator program from before is running unattended in the background, just like we wanted it to. So what if it took the entire night to finish? I don't care about machine time and non-time sensitive tasks. Now that the identity program is finished, we can upload the storage identities directly to the Synology NAS to the corresponding RAID groups that they will be put in. I'll put the majority of the new nodes on 3TB disks, a couple on 2TB disks, and a single on the rest. Now that the identities have been created and uploaded to the respective drives, we can change the owner and the mode of each of the RAID groups to the correct user. I'll be going through the setup on the first node and then speed through the rest with them, because once again, it's boring to watch. Let's navigate to one of them. The identity creator leaves this setup.commands files that can be pasted directly to the terminal. Super easy. Once the setup has been finished, a bunch of files are created in the background. I'm not quite sure why storage is dependent on this two-step setup process to get the nodes up and running for the first time. I just try to follow the official documentation. Once finished though, we can do docker compose up to spin up the node. I'm not going to do detached mode right now, because I want to see the locks as they are coming in to help me with troubleshooting. I usually have issues when setting up new nodes for the first time, and I surely will have issues this time again. Let's take a look at the node through the web browser. So 110 is the IP of the Synology, and 14014 is the port that I assigned to the node. If you're interested in the Identity Creator program, I'll make a video on that. For now, the link to my GitHub is in the description. The node is indeed offline. This is because I forgot to open the port on my firewall. I'll do that off camera so I can sit here and talk while the rest of the installation speed through in the background. Now that all the nodes are online, I can navigate to each one of them on their respective IP and port in the browser. This works in theory and I guess also in practice, but it gets very tedious and very fast when checking multiple nodes. So I automated the task by creating a PowerShell script that will do it for me. The script simply goes through the IPs and puts the stored terabyte value on my clipboard. One of them here is already showing a single gigabyte, but I'm fairly certain that this is a rounding error, since the nodes have only been running for a couple of minutes here. This node has indeed picked up 256 megs. We'll check tomorrow and see how much storage they are ingressed. Let's go upstairs and check to the disks and see if they're alright. The rack is just next to the stairs here, so if we sit down and stabilize the camera, we can then move the pile of now dead disks out of the way so we can get a good look at the storage array. Just looking at the status indicator lights, we see that they have slowed down significantly in activity when compared to before. This is probably just because that the smart initialization tests have finished and there is no more activity on the drives. Some activity, but not a lot. We'll run the get storage stats script again and we can see that all of the nodes are at 11 gigabyte 
or 0.011 terabyte. If we go and verify that on the web page of the individual nodes, let's go to 14014 here. We can then scroll down and see that indeed it's at 11. The next one here is also at 11. And I kid you not, the next one is also at 11. I'll just go through all of these notes here to make sure that everything is alright. If you're getting bored already now, I understand you. That's why I wrote this script in the first place. Like I said, checking all of these notes gets tedious very fast. Speaking of tedious, what about the money aspect of it all? Looking at storage documentation, you see that you get one and a half dollar per stored terabyte per month. And that's not a whole lot of money. Like I said, you don't do this because of the money, you do it because it's fun. Anyways, with my calculations, if we get 10 gigabyte per day per node, and we made nine new nodes, then over 30 days that'll be two and a half terabyte per month, which is just around four dollars a month. It's not something you'll get rich of, but I'll take it. The footage in the background, by the way, is me picking up some stuff for the next project. What are we going to do in the next project? <laughs> I'll get the suspense going. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you have a great day. Until next time. Cheerio!